Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hit and Hustle from IrishSportsDaily.com. I am your host, Greg Flamong, and with me, as always, is Jamie Uyama. University, it is Tuesday, May 16th, and we are we are going to do another mailbag, Jamie. You wanted to do that last week. I thought it was a good idea because it's a good time to uh, get involved with the mailbag uh, since there's not a lot going on, and, and people like to have – there's lots of different uh, – uh, wood in the fire, irons in the fire, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot going on and people are kind of scattered with their thoughts. So uh, I figured it's a good time to, we figured it's a good time to go, go in with the mailbag and, and put the questions to the people and, and they responded. So uh, we've got a lot to talk about today. Um, but first we want to talk to you about ESQ clothing. They've got uh, Ga Wang and ESQ have the first uh, world's first bamboo shirt. It is uh, wrinkle resistant. It is odor resistant. It has stretch. It's, it feels nice. It feels soft. Uh, it feels good on the body. You don't have to wear an undershirt. Uh, Marcus Freeman's wearing it constantly. Notre Dame football players are wearing the uh, sport jackets on the that sort of thing. Every Notre Dame player that I've talked to, I talk to them about ESQ, and they're always like, yeah, they have a lot of bunch of ESQ stuff that, that Ga sent me and or I just bought on my own. So they, they all have. Uh, they're all sporting their ESQ stuff, and they all have rave reviews about it. So go to ESQ, esqclothing.com, upgrade your shirt game uh, for the upcoming season, Jamie. You want to be ready. You want to you want to have a good shirt game for the up news and notes before we get started. Um, Alex Aaronsberger entered the portal. Well, he didn't actually enter the portal. He entered the uh, he entered the the portal to get on a plane to go back to Germany. He's going to be going to medical school. He wants to be a doctor. Congratulations to him on that. Using his education, I think he graduated with two degrees. Is I think that's what I saw. Yeah, double major. Uh, kind of the kind of the opposite track of Stetson Bennett there. And so he's uh, he's <laughs> been he's been on campus for four months. He has two majors. Uh, Stetson Bennett on camera seven and has zero majors. So that's, um, that that's, uh, Oh, Oh, in the meantime, yeah. Western Manor film says we're a little bit late to start the show. Uh, we can show Greg's touchdown return versus Chaminade. Uh, I have not loaded. I have not loaded that. Maybe, maybe another time in the, when the, like if we really get like down for content in the off season, we can, we can show some old school football stuff, but, uh, so that's what happened to Alex Ahrensberger. He left the program. Uh, congratulations to him and good luck. Um, uh, Notre Dame got a commitment from I th- did did Rizak did Rizak commit after we recorded he did we recorded he did. on Thursday but we talked about him a lot we talked before. about him a ton but he is officially in the class Bodie Cahoon um, is officially in the class as well um, and we we're, we're going to talk about linebacker recruiting and that sort of thing because that's going to come up um, in in the show uh, Joe Bro is asking uh, would you like to Notre Dame as a uh, pick up and that is actually the first question, so we're going to get to that. Um, and then Notre Dame picked up a uh, a, a, a portal, a portal uh, commitment from the uh, the defensive back out of Rhode Island. What, what Antonio? What is it? Carter? Carter the second. Right, right. Antonio Carter the second. There's so many names. I, I get like I, I'll blank on one. Uh, Antonio Carter the second. Uh, it's a pretty big. It's a it's a big one, I think, in my opinion. Just for you know, he's going to play, right? So anytime you get someone, whether he starts or not, you know he's going to play a bunch. Um, he's a good player. His film looks good. Um, and the thing to me about like small time, uh, or smaller school players at skill positions, is like if you have the physical ability, then you should be able to translate to a higher level of competition because he has the size, right? Six one one eighty. He's he's a physical football player. Uh, he's he's got the physical attributes in terms of like he's got nice speed. He can he can turn and run. He's got corner ability. He's got a whole bunch of uh, the physical traits that you want. And if you can do that, you can you can play at pretty much any level, right? And that's why you see so many like smaller school guys like they'll go in the draft and they'll go pretty high because hey, if you can run, you can run, right? And if you can physically do it, it's not like. It's not like a Kane Madden situation where it's like, hey, you can push around guys at smaller schools on the defensive line, but then when you get up to D one, it's a little bit different. And I think that's a little bit different. Um, Jamie, what what were your thoughts on 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 Antonio Carter before we get into the questions today? I mean, I really like him. Uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious why he had all the offers that he had. I mean, one, I mean, people need help in the defensive backfield. Yeah, that's that that's a thing that that plenty of plenty of programs need. And the other thing is that. He, uh, 
yeah, he's a guy. I mean, they played Pitt last year, so they played, uh, you know, obviously an FBS school. Didn't look out of place at all in, 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 in that game. Um, in fact, he had a monster hit in that game too. But yeah. um, I think just in terms of like athletically and size-wise, he's like 6'1", 200. He's a guy who plays corner, but a guy who is going to play safety at Notre Dame, can play safety, uh, pl- has, has played some safety um, there as well. Um, and kind of just has the change of direction, the recognition and the kind of thing, kind of things that you want there, the physicality to play safety, to play nickel possibly. And, and then I just think with, with where Notre Dame's at and what they want to do with some of the, like the three safety stuff that they had done in the spring. Well, I mean, that's well and good and all, but if you only have three safeties you can count on, then it's like, well, all three of these guys better be completely healthy or whatever. And you, they, you just need more depth there. And he yeah. could start. He could start this year. There, there's a chance that he, he could win a starting job. Um, and also, even if he doesn't this year, he's still got another another year after, right? So, And that's the other thing because they're going to lose DJ Brown for sure after this year, right? He's a yeah. sixth year. Um they could lose X watts, could happen, right? N- not 100% that they could happen, but, you know, uh, they're going to lose Thomas Harper, right? Um, so that's something that right away, you're, it's, that's going to be a thing that could, you know, you're going to need numbers there. And that's kind of one of the reasons, too, when you're looking at, like, filling in for someone in Hillman, and it's great that they got a grad transfer, but it's more important that they got somebody that could be here for multiple years, right? And then yeah. I think that's that's the big thing. And I just to kind of build off what you said about um, that kind of jump from F- I mean, obviously it's a jump FCS yeah. to, uh, to to the FBS and obviously a, a place like Notre Dame, um, but it's a much harder jump on the lines than it is for yeah. defensive backs because even in that league, right? He plays in the CAA. There's fast guys all over the place. You can yeah. find fast all yeah. over the place. You can't find big all over the place and right. big and fast, right? Like that's that's the thing that, you, that you're missing, right? So um, that's why it's not as big of an adjustment. You see more guys uh, make it to the NFL. More guys make the jump. Um, you know, there was a guy who uh, I believe Darius Joyner who was at I think Jackson State and then he transferred to. Western Illinois, and then he played at Duke last year, and he was like third team All ACC, right? Like yeah. he was their, they're basically their best player in their secondary. Um, and and I don't know for sure that like cars that's going to happen with him, but I'm just saying that's the kind of thing that you can see that happen that happens quite a bit. Like, uh, some of the guys who were like the best guys in Marshall secondary were guys who jumped up from the FCS too, right? It's, um. It, it's pretty common, and I, I think that's if, – if you have a need area, you'd rather and, – and you want to try to get guys from the FCS to possibly fill it, you'd rather it be a receiver or a DB for sure. Yeah. Uh, Westburn Manor Films is asking, do we think you could have the same level of impact as Nick, Nick McLeod at corner? Is that a realistic impact to safety? Um, I would say if he, if he comes in and is a playmaker in camp, then I think he'll start. That, that's my opinion. Yeah, I, I think if he should, and then then the then that answer to this question is absolutely yes. I think he absolutely could. So um, that's how I see it. If I mean, if he's not if he's not a playmaker, if he's just kind of steady, then I mean, you wouldn't see that. I think he'll definitely be in the rotation. Um, it's just I think he's good enough for it. So that's, yeah, that's. I, kinda, I think it's also a much different situation because Nick McLeod, like they needed him, like they were yeah. desperate. They yeah. were really desperate at corner that year. And that had a lot to do with like the 2017 year. They didn't take any corners, right? They missed, they had three guys committed and they didn't end up signing any. So in that 2020 season, they were in real trouble, right? They were yeah. in real trouble. They needed somebody to come in right away. Um, and Nick Cloud was obviously a good player. I, I mean, I don't think it's out of uh, the realm of possibility that he could be as good as kind of a Nick McLeod type player. But I think, he's not walking into a situation the same as Nick McLeod where it's like, Oh, like, you know, it's going to be pretty obvious yeah. uh, there. And then, I mean, the other thing to say too, is that, I mean, Nick McLeod played in the ACC, you know, before. So right. it's there. 
it wasn't a jump. It was just a just a smooth transition, right? Yeah. All right. Um, so we're gonna get to the questions now, and I and and I'll say so. What we're gonna do is I loaded all of the questions. Um, onto a little slide from the ISD message board. So we're going to get to those first. Everyone who's asking a question in the chat, I have starred them and we will get to them. So what, usually our shows are around an hour, right? And then we, we, if we go beyond that, like whatever topic we're on, or if we want to get to another topic, we'll just do on the next show. On this show, it, it, we, we're, we know we might go long. So it's cool, right? So if you have a question, all good. We'll get to it, all right? So let's start... Um, the questions from the ISD subscribers here. And this is from Iris Tank 6900. Uh, just a reminder that someone on Friday's show wanted your thoughts on the expiring uh, Under Armour deal. Uh, sorry if he missed, uh, or sorry if he, someone asked it before and he missed it. Um, thank you to Iris Tank for that. And then TVAN uh, P63 said, regarding this, do you think Notre Dame will make the decision purely on money or will Freeman have any say in getting a good quality brand, i.e. Nike? I know it's a small thing, but having Nike in uniforms is noticed by kids. Um, so what is your what is your take on the on the Under Armour thing and, and Notre Dame possibly switching apparels? I'm I, I we I mean, we've talked about it a bunch. I, I think Notre Dame needs to do better than Under Armour. Um, but it is interesting in terms of like, if you think about if, if Notre Dame, what, what does Notre Dame want from their apparel company this time? How, how invested in NIL does Notre Dame want their new apparel company to be? And how much is that a going to be a decision maker for the university? Right? So if Under Armour steps up and says like, Hey, we'll really support the athletes, not just at, not just the football team, but let's say the basketball team, uh, soccer teams, all, all the teams on campus, right? It's not like football is the only team wearing gear. So like, well, like we'll really support the the your student athletes in NIL, and and Nike says, well, I mean, we're Nike, right? Like we have schools, we have tons of schools already. Like we don't need to dip into all that stuff. You know, we'll, we'll, we will give you a nice package, but we don't, we're not going to be as aggressive in NIL as Nike is like, do you, do you think how big of a, a decision-making driver do you think that would be for the university? I mean, money is going to be a lot to do with it. Like it's just, it's, I mean, it's how it is. It's, it makes sense. Right. Um, and I don't think it really, like, if you think about the, the previous, when, when they did the UA deal, people weren't killing them for it. And it, I think it was probably a good bet. It just went. Did UA you had different, had a different, it was like, oh, interesting. Like you went with UA, like that's, that's a big deal, right? Like it was, it was, yeah. it was like, wow, Notre Dame. It was like a they, cool they, brand at the time. They zagged um, when everyone else is zigging, right? Yeah. And it looked like they were kind of trying to be like, hey, we're a new Nike. Like, because, yeah. uh, I mean, for those who don't know about UA and kind of like how it kind of started, like, I mean, whatever, I'm old. Like when it was, it was like a cool thing to get like Under Armour to like wear under your gear yeah, when yeah. you played, yeah. whatever. That was like a thing. It was like workout gear. That's what UA was, right? That was workout gear apparel. And then they branched out and they were like, okay, now we're going to do shoes and we're going to do all these things. And I think at the time too, that was like, you know, when they first did the UA deal, that was like when like Steph Curry was blown up. So it was like, oh, yeah. they're like going to blow up their basketball thing. It was all these kind of things. And they had all these like other football athletes. And it was like, it was really expanding and there was real potential there. It just didn't go anywhere. And yeah. they never improved the shoes. Like they never improved the shoes to the point like, um, I think it was a problem, right? And um, so not, forget about even just like the cool factor. It just wasn't good. Like it just wasn't, I don't, I don't think the quality was, was as good. So um, I think from that perspective, it was just like, you know, they're betting on, on that and probably like money and stock and all that kind of stuff, but it's like the stock didn't turn out. So yeah, I think money matters because if you want to stay independent and I know they do like that, that money is going to matter. It is going to matter. Right. So it's like, you can't just take, I'm not saying this would happen, but just say like, New Balance comes in and they're like, we're, they got the biggest offer. It's like, well, what's New Balance worth to you? It, they better go way, way, way over the top because it, it wouldn't be wouldn't be worth it. Because you, you know you have to you like you said, it's got to be for all sports too. It's got to be for all these things. 
And that's why Nike is just like the absolute no brainer or Nike or Adidas really. But like, I mean, I think everyone, I, I, I would be shocked if, I mean, other than people who have um, other thoughts about Nike from the, the past, like, I, I don't know why it wouldn't be like a no brainer to do Nike if they had like a competitive offer, because I mean, not only is it like the cool factor or whatever, they, they're still the cool factor, but they make the, over the course of all these different sports, they make the highest quality of stuff. So I, I think it just makes sense where it's like money is a factor. Yes. But the other stuff has to be a factor because you just took something where you did a big bet and it didn't work. Yeah, It didn't work. And um, I, so like, it, it's like one of those things too. It's like, if uh, I know whatever, we'll get in the TV deal stuff later. Cause somebody else asked about it, but like, if somebody's like going to give you, it's like, well, if Amazon offers you to, to get, to have Notre Dame um, on their service or whatever, right? Amazon prime. It's like, well, the money has to be just like, so much better because you're taking away all these other stuff. It's still like a, it's still a bit of a barrier, right? And it's still a bet on that. And now that, I mean, obviously Amazon's got in the NFL now, so they, it'd be less of a bet now, right? If then yeah. you were the only one, but, um, but yeah, that's like, it's, it's the same way of thinking, right? Like, um, yeah, money matters, but there's, there's other factors too. And, and it's like you said, back in the day, like when you, you could get Under Armour stuff like for under your uniform or whatever, like that yeah. was a big deal because Nike hadn't really gotten into that space yet. But then Nike yeah. responded, Shout out you know, Bay. shout out East Bay. Right. And, yeah. and, and, and then Nike responded and they came out with their air pro combat gear and all that other stuff and they matched them. Right. Like Nike didn't stand pat on that. And so now it's maybe, maybe you like, maybe someone likes Under Armour more in terms of that, but at least it's comparable. Right. At least it's yeah, it's there. Right. Whereas the shoes, like they're not even close. Like it's it's not, it's not even, even and, and that's a performance issue. It's it is a performance it, issue and, and, sure. and so that is like that should really carry a lot of weight. Like this is actually like you could the, the, the performance is hindered by your equipment. That cannot happen. Yeah. That cannot be the case. And so that there's there's that, you know, and, and I think what Nike needs to do beyond the money. Too. Like I think the money at the end of the day will be comparable. I think that the biggest thing is Nike make Notre Dame feel special in some yeah. kind of way. Like we are doing this special thing for you, and therefore, you know, this is where you differentiate yourself from all the other Nike schools. Like I think that's what Nike yeah. needs to do. And then, yeah. and I think, and if you don't go there, then um, it's like you know what? I that's unserious to me. So, yeah. Um, and, and I do think too, um, you know, because, uh, people are bringing up the recruiting aspect. That is a part of it. That is a part it's, of it, it right? It's and a it, part of it. And if people say it's not, it, it is, it is. All, <laughs> and, and, and all you got to say too, is, uh, you know, I've been to, uh, a number of Notre Dame pro pro days, um, you know, over the last seven years, I don't know, like yeah. four or five of, of Notre Dame Pro Days, <laughs> the dudes don't wear. They all wear stuff. Nike. They all wear Nike or Adidas or whatever. Like they, they're not wearing their UA cleats, and yeah. and and it's not because they all have deals with Nike. <laughs> like you know, right. it's because that stuff is better. And if you give, if you gave someone a choice, and it's not even just about cool stuff, it's about like this is better this is better. That's what they would choose. So I think that's, I mean, it's important. It's, it, it, it is really important. And frankly too, like, you know, how much say is Freeman going to ha have in it? I mean, I don't know. He, I'm sure he'll give his two cents or whatever, but the basketball yeah. program, both the women's and the men's should have a lot of say, because like people, the kids don't want to wear Under Armour. They don't. I mean, footwear and basketball. I mean, come on. Pretty it's important. A, yeah, it's pretty important. Um, yeah. it, and Xander brought up the recruits want Nike and go with Nike. Like, I, I can't speak to recruits because I haven't talked to recruits about this. I, I mean, I just kind of know. Because first of all, I was a football player as well. I wanted to play, I wanted to wear Nike. So there's that. The other part, too, is I've asked a bunch of former players, like, just what do you, what would you, what do you want? You want Jordan Brand? You want Nike? 
do you want Adidas? Do you want Under Armour? And they all said Nike, all of them. No yeah. one said anything else. So that's my. Well, I think like Jordan brand too, whatever. It, I mean, it is Nike. So it's like, I mean, I know they're technically separate, but it's like, but you know, the quality is going to be the same. Right. right. So that's the, that's the thing. But I, I mean, Joe Burrow asked about Jordan brand. It, it's not going that, to That's not going to happen. So. It's not going to happen. Um, you know, so that that's from what from what we've heard it is not going to be an option yeah. in Notre Dame. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't get your hopes up because personally, if I had a choice, I mean, I would be like, I mean, I think it would look pretty dope to yeah. for it to be um, Notre Dame and Jordan. But that's just me. Yeah. All right. Next question from Irish Loyal. Uh, true or false? After the Ohio State game. At the latest, Ziegler and Sneed will play more snaps per game than Bertrand and Kaiser for the remainder of the season. Uh, assuming assuming health. Let's say assuming health. Oh, I'm going to say there's 100% false. Just because, like, I don't think, uh, first of all, I think everybody wants to replace, like, J.D. Bertrand, which I think he's a good player. Like, I think he's a good player. I, I mean, is he... Tavon Coney is a Matt Titeo? No, he's not, right? But I would say he's like rich man's Greer Martini. Like, he's a, he's a good player, a good Mike linebacker. He's going to be a, a captain again. He's a good leader. He knows the defense in and out. He's a solid player versus an inside run game. Um, he's productive. And the coaches obviously love him. That's the other thing, too. Even if I didn't think that he was, like, a decent player, the coaches love him. Like, they're not – he's a guy – um, I would be shocked if he lost his starting job. I, I, I would be shocked. And um, I think there's w- way more, um, there's a better chance that, that something could happen with either Maris Leofa or Kaiser, that they, those guys are, their roles are changed or whatever, or they end up losing out stuff. But I mean, I, I think if, if health, like you said, Greg, if, if they're healthy, I just don't see any way that, that J.D. Bertrand isn't the, like, Mike linebacker playing the majority of snaps for Notre Dame there next season. So that would be false to me. But I definitely think that Siegel and Schneed, I mean, it's a competition. Those guys got a shot to make some noise here in camp and, you know, at the beginning of the season too. I think Sneed, I mean – I feel like they're not playing the same position. So, I mean, I guess no, they they're could, not. Well, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. that's the other part is like Snead is kind of outside of this. I, 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 I think it's interesting. Like, I think the, the question would well, be better I if it was, they might play him at will. Uh, right. But yeah. like, I, I, I think he, I think Snead's role this year will be more, uh, uh, like sub package. I think for sure that's that lock it down. He's going to be a sub package guy. Yeah. No matter what, no matter if he's in the base defense, plays a lot in base defense or not, he's going to play a lot in the sub package. I I think the better question would be Marist versus Kaiser on that front. In which case I would, I would take Kaiser in this one. I would take Kaiser. I mean, I I don't even, I don't, I mean, I I really don't know. I think it's, I don't know either. I'm just, I'm pretty, I think it's pretty open. Like I, I could say either one of those guys, but also too, like, would it surprise me if Nolan Ziegler was it? No, because also I think everybody thinks it always falls in line. Like, oh, they never bump up. No, that's not just what, what has happened at Notre Dame at all, right? And I don't know, maybe Al Golden will be different. But like, I mean, think about like Shane Simon was supposed to be the guy until he wasn't, right? And then like Mares beat him out during the season. And then Shane Simon wasn't the starter yeah. anymore. And then the next year, it was like, okay, well, Maris and Shane Simon are competing for the J.D. Bertrand beat out Shane Simon for the second team, Will linebacker. And he, and he was right? already pressing Marist for time at Will. I mean, they, they, yeah. he was, Bertrand was having a great camp in 2021. Yeah. And then Marist got hurt. And then it was like, okay, he's the guy. And, 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 yeah. and so, like, that to me is where you could see Ziegler, like, yeah. Through injury, these guys they get their chance and then they seize it. That's what Bertrand did, right? They, yeah. He got his chance through injury and then he seized his chance, and now it's hard to get him out of the lineup because of that. And so, like for Ziegler, like that's how it could happen for him. Um, and you know that that's just how it works a lot in football. 
Well, and then like, here's another example. Bo Bauer yeah. was next in line a bunch of times and never became the starter, right? I'm not saying he was a valuable player. Like he's a really core special teams player, um, a good leader, a good, a good member of the team, a contributor on the team, a valuable piece on the team. But he never won the mic job, even though he was like had experience, you know, years, whatever, uh, on, on other players. So it doesn't always work like that. Like, I, I think people always assume that, like, that, I mean, the coaches want to play the best guy, which is always why, like, everyone talked about Prince Collie last year. It's like, I mean, if he was the best guy, they thought Prince Collie was going to be this difference maker. He would have been the starter at, by some point in the season. Yeah. 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 All right. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Iris Bronx says, how significant is the news regarding the NIL fund? So what he's referring to is um, there was a press release yesterday and Notre Dame's uh, fund program, uh, Friends of the University of Notre Dame. That's what that stands for. Uh, they are officially a sponsor. It's a great uh, acronym. Yeah. Uh, they were um, they were <laughs> officially a sponsor of for the Notre Dame football program. Uh, how significant is it? I, so I was talking to Matt about this and basically this is more of just like it, it, this is how I look at it and and maybe you have a different view but this is how I look at it I just look at it like it, it's just a it's just an embrace of the university and this uh collective I guess in that hey like hey we're kind of open for business I guess and so it's just like a public announcement of that like hey Notre Dame's got something going on with fund yeah. Uh, donate to fund. You can donate to fund. This is how you donate to fund. This is Notre Dame's collective. People ask a lot, a lot of the time about Notre Dame's NIL collective and that sort of thing. This is what it is. That's what it is. I don't think it's significant in terms of now Notre Dame is going to offer Dante Moore type player a million dollars a year. I, I don't think that's what that is. Right. This has been in place. They are just flaunting it for a better way to put it. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, well, we, we know that to be a fact, but it's also, uh, I think it's um, it's kind of a signal to um, like fans and supporters who, not just to say like, hey, give your hundred bucks or give whatever, right? But also like, hey, this is like, we're doing, we're involved in this game. Yeah. We're doing this. So yeah. Uh, you can stop complaining. <laughs> I, I think that's the thing because yeah. I, I have a feeling like they get, um, I mean, I'm not just talking about like, they're not paying attention to the message part. At least I hope not. They're not paying to message boards or whatever, but, but you know, or Twitter or whatever, but it's like, those people can't really say anything <laughs> if, if when this is it's public. And also if there's just like, weird old guys who are like sending emails to, to Notre Dame being like, why are you doing this? I'm like, I believe me, there's probably like, like a hundred guys who just sent random stuff about like when Notre Dame lost Dante Moore, <laughs> like yeah. that was probably a thing. Just, yeah. just a bunch of weirdos just sending that kind of stuff. So that's like, this is like, Hey, okay, well give your 20 bucks or whatever. Like, and then we can, hopefully we can get Dante Moore. Like that's just the, the kind of thing that it's probably saying. Agree. All right. Moving on. Uh, Iris Bronx, another question says, what current commit has the best NFL upside at this point? current realistic target has the same? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. Cam Williams. Yeah. Is, is the guy. With you took my mind. Team. I was hoping you would say someone else, but he's a wide receiver. Well, I just think I, well, <laughs> it's just, it's not only that he has the, um, the skills and all that kind of stuff. But like he, is like a legit elite athlete too. So, um, yeah, he's, he could be a first round pick one day. He, he's got, a, he's got a chance. Right. And, um, obviously it's a long way and it's, I mean, people have seen like there's receivers that don't always work out even super talented ones too. So you got to wait and see, but I would say just at an upside. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Him. And then I wouldn't, I would say CJ Carr, you could pick him, but it's like, there's just, it's such a crapshoot with quarterbacks. Yeah. Just like, yeah. with like, if you, if you compared like defensive line, five-star uh, to 
quarterback five stars, the defensive line hit way more, way yeah. more, right? It's just how it is because it's, a lot, you know, a lot of it is like well, only one quarterback plays. So it's opportunity, getting in the right system. If there's a coaching change, all that kind of, there's, there's all these different things that go into it. I mean, I would say my one sleeper guy would be Bryce Young. Mm. I think just in terms of like, he, one, he's going to be a monster. He's a, he's a big, big, long athlete and he's raw right now, but he's got like just incredible upside. And uh, I mean, he's going to be a guy, I think that a few years from now, um, you know, is, is, could be in that conversation. Right. And, um, and current realistic target, um, I would say Malachi Williams for me. Um, I mean, I think, I mean, he has physical development to do, but there's just not many dudes that one, he plays that position, he plays edge rusher. That is a position that that is a thing where, you know, that's valued. The other thing is he's just got special kind of twitch reactive athleticism. Um, and I think he's, you know, the best pass rusher that, yeah. that, uh, that they're, uh, tar- targeting and he's realistic, right? Like he's, their name is very much in it for him. So, um, yeah, that would, he, would, he would be my guy. 20, Cam Williams, 24 foot long jump. I can't tell, I, I, I know a lot of people don't have context for this sort of thing because like people don't track long jump numbers of what that means. Now it's 11th nationally. It'd be like, it, it, it's, a, it's akin to, uh, uh, to Micah Bell running 10 4. That's what that is. It's like, yeah, it, that, that is elite. That is an incredible yeah. jump. <laughs> I, I, when I saw it, I was like, is that, is that real? Like, is that for real? Like, usually you get like high 22, maybe mid like 23, low 23 feet, 24 foot long. I mean, that is legit explosiveness for a, a big guy. This is a heavy guy, like in terms of uh, relative to most long jumpers. Long jumpers want to be long and they want to be light. They want to fly yeah. through the air. You get a 190 pound muscle bound wide receiver jumping. That's crazy. So that's, um, that's really good. That's really good. Uh, very high on that. I think for a realistic target, I mean, for me, you, you, you got to think about NFL upside. You got to think about Justin Scott here. I mean, He's got he's got physical ability. He's got the the size that's just rare. It's just rare. If he puts it together, and you know, if, if you look at someone like okay, if he hits his potential, th- this is an NF, this is a high NFL draft pick. If he hits his potential, oh, yeah. now that's that's the if right now. That's what we've been talking about. Yeah, is is that is that what's coming? We don't know, but I think that's one. And look at I I, I certainly I certainly think he's realistic. I I don't know like. It's hot and cold with him. Like sometimes I feel I mean, like you never know. Yeah. I, sometimes I feel like I think Notre Dame's got a really good chance, and then other times I feel like I don't know. Like I don't know, man. Like because look, it, it it the people have pointed out in the chat too about him, and it's just like he hasn't scheduled a visit yet, and I get really nervous when it's like a local kid. And it was like this with Dante Moore at the end when they kind of lost him. When it was like, hey, is he going to schedule a official visit to Notre Dame? And it's like, well, he's been in Notre Dame a bunch. You know, he doesn't really need to. He can come whenever he wants. You take official. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. You, you no, take I, official. If, if he doesn't take an official to, to Notre Dame, uh, especially because they're, they changed the rule and you could take as many as you want or whatever, that's going yeah. to be a thing. Like, I mean, I guess if he doesn't decide – in the summer and then he's like okay i'm going to take my official i'm going to go to the usc game or something I'm like okay that's fine but it's just like if if he's like yeah i want to make a decision before my senior season and he doesn't take an official i'm like i would be pretty pessimistic players take official visits that's just yeah. r- regardless of where it is yeah. you know jalen smith took an official visit to notre dame before he committed he's from fort wayne you know so it, it just he's got to take an official. But well, and, and if you do, you want to get around these other guys that you're going to be maybe in the class with. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to take part in all the kind of stuff that they're taking part in? Like, um, I think it's just a, it's, and, it's, it's it's more about it's it's less about like the free meals and whatever. It's more about like the that experience of that. Um, 
you know, because it's it's another thing. It's not like he has to go and take like a midweek visit like some of these other guys who are taking so many visits, whatever. Yeah. Like you'd want to get him on campus when all these other guys are there, right? And, uh, you know, I mean, but that's why you just never know. If, if he's looking for the right carpet stuff everywhere else, that, that to yeah. me is not a great sign. I mean, go and have fun, whatever, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, if he takes all of his visits, that's fine. Uh, I'm just saying, if one of those is it's an RAM, I think that's a pretty bad sign. Yeah. And to be fair, you know, he was there in the spring around Cam Williams and. and oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Too early to and, be like whatever, but just. Yeah. But then it's like, you know, he was there in the spring and it's like, I'm coming back for the spring game. Definitely coming back from the spring game. And then he doesn't. It's well, just kind of like, oh, I don't like it. He don't like said that. it. That's kind of how it's gone with him, right? Where he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm com- I'm committing this weekend. And it's like, crystal balls in for Notre Dame. And then it's like, uh, no, I'm not going to commit now. Actually, which, not. Yeah. Which, fine. But it's just like, he is it's definitely just- a guy that you... I think the whole way, um, even if he commits to Notre Dame, you just wait it's almost that better September. that he it's almost better that he doesn't because no 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 you I, I get it when it, let it be all done yeah and then he can say and then because I, I think if he I think if he would have committed in March, no way that he uh, stayed committed no way yeah 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 all right moving on. Uh, tr- uh, Tro JCPA. Uh, what player eval was different than expected when evaluating Notre Dame prospects? I, I don't know specifically what this. I means. didn't really understand this question. I probably should have asked. Maybe I'll ask him after. But it, what did what did you think of this question? I I thought of it as what player that you you maybe you heard of him. Notre Dame offered him, and you evaluated him, and it's not what you thought. So like oh, okay. my 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 classic example is is Kyle Hamilton, where when they offered him, he was uh, and when he was taking visits and that sort of thing, he was like Rezac level recruit, like lowest, literally the lowest rated player in the class. And I watched him, and I was like, okay, like okay, we think Rezac is like underrated i guess and it's like you know is he is he 900th no maybe he's like 500th or something like maybe he should be like a higher rated recruit but like watching kyle's film was like okay this is a five star now like i was like this guy is very very good he should be a five star yeah and so that's one where I, I that I did not expect to see. I expected to see someone who was like, "Oh, this is probably a four star." I did not expect to see that, right? So that's that's kind of my my example for this. Um, man, that's tough. You know what? I'm gonna have to think more on that specific thing. I'm apologies uh, because I probably should have understand the question, but I. I I just didn't get it. So I was like, yeah. I'm not sure what, what he meant, but I guess just top of mind, just recent one, I'll maybe I'll like throw, um, I'll kind of dive deeper into it and write something around six thoughts or something like that. But like, I'd say recent one would be Armel Mukum. Mm-hmm. Right. But I mean, certainly like uh, Kyle Hampton, cause I know like Armel Mukum, you're like, he's a Stanford commit. He's like, hasn't played much football. Like, uh, and then, you know, he they were going to flip him. And, I mean, believe me, there were people who just, just ripped when he got committed. They're, they're just whatever. But then I watched his film and was like, oh, no, this guy's he's got a shot. He's pretty good. And, like, and then obviously he got better during his senior year. And he, you know, moved up the rankings and stuff and probably should have moved up for more people in the rankings. But, um, yeah, I would say he was a surprising guy because I didn't know – what exactly to expect and he was better than i thought but uh yeah i mean hamilton was for sure was a guy like you said greg that was a guy that right away it was like what is going on here this is insane how he is ranked where he is even if you were just like oh i'm not sure about this you just mean like well 
the bare minimum, you'd put them as a high three star or something or whatever, right? Just because you're like, oh, if I'm unsure, like maybe he's going to be like a linebacker because he's so big or whatever. I'm not sure about the long speed or whatever. There would be zero excuse to have him like 1,000. It's just yeah. wild. It's just, <laughs> yeah. It just remains the dumbest thing ever to this day. Yeah. Um, I would say one in a negative way was like Deion Colsey. Like when he was when he was committed the first time, I want to say he was like 67 overall. And I watched him, I was like, I don't think he's 67. Like yeah. I like I was like, I oh I guess you I would think, think about that you would think he would you would think he would be better. Like I just like he didn't I didn't see the burst. It's like if you're gonna be top one hundred, you better you better have some burst, man. Like you better um you better be scaring I, me off the line. I just I guess from it. that perspective, like uh, I, whatever. And I, I don't want to knock a kid who hasn't even been on campus yet, but I'd say Brennan Vernon went, cause he was like top 10 for some. Yeah. Like, I mean, look, if someone like if he, and, wherever he ended up, I think is probably fair. Yeah. I, and it's not to say that I don't think he's going to be like, he has, a, he has a chance to be a good player. Uh, but where he was ranked, it was like, he was the second coming, you know, yeah. it was like, Oh, and, and believe me too, like, cause they got Keeley in him basically at the same time. And it was like a much bigger deal to get Vernon. Yeah. Cause but, of the Ohio thing, the Ohio state. Cause of Ohio state, whatever. Right. But, but comparing even the film, then you'd be like, I think Keeley has got a much higher upside. I mean, obviously Keeley, Keeley kind of finished where Vern Vernon started. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Moving to the next. Notre Dame says, "How many birds live in Greg's office?" Uh, that's just. I, I like. I like the bit. I like the bit. I yeah. closed the. I closed the garage today, though. So no birds. No birds, unfortunately. Um, it's a lot of birds. Look at I, we 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 let 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 life happen, Jamie. That's what I say. If someone wants to build a nest on on the, in the eaves of my uh, house, then that's fine. You know. Uh, the you know Lion King, Circle of Life, and all that stuff. All right. Uh, Fred P says, how impactful will it be for overall performance of Notre Dame's defense to be able to play in the same system two years in a row? Which players players will be impacted the most? Um, I thought Drew White shed a lot of uh, insight into this when I spoke to him in, in the interview about how hard it is to go from, you know, one defense to the next, um, especially going from a, a, like a free flowing defense like Marcus Freeman to one that's maybe a little bit more structured in Al Golden. Um, so I would say for this one, I would say the linebackers. I would think yeah. I would say the linebackers, especially because they are they're responsible for so much. I would say don't be surprised if you see better play from basically all of them, right? But Bertrand and uh, Leah Fow, especially like just being yeah. more comfortable, being able to play free. Um, did you have anyone else in mind, Jamie? I, um, well, the, I mean, I feel the exact same way. The only thing I'll add is that. I think, and it's something that Drew mentioned as well about that transition from high school to a golden type defense is much more difficult than it would be uh, for uh, a Freeman defense, yeah. right? So, um, you know, not to say that, it, yeah, like you said, not to say that it isn't a transition to the Freeman, but it's, it's an even bigger one, right? So I would think too, that's where you see Snead and Ziegler. And these guys mm. too have a chance to really do that, and not just that. So those guys like uh, Snead and Ziegler come in, and they can't really be taught anything by the players because the, mm. the other guys are learning it too. And now all these guys who come in now, so Drake Bowen, Osbury Zinter, those guys have a much better. I, I mean, I don't expect that any of those guys to really have a big role or anything this year, but they have a much better chance to make, if not this year, the next year a, a chance because they have other guys who are in the system now who can teach them. Yeah, who can teach them. So it's not just the coaches, and you don't have to just spend all this time in your playbook and you're learning. It's like, you know, you're asking Bertrand about it, and he's like. I'm trying to figure it out, whatever, right? Like all of these guys have a better understanding. So then they can teach the young guys. And I mean, that's a bit, that is a big, big thing. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good point. Um, Cause that was, that was a thing um, when Notre Dame didn't have that really good safety play in like 16, 15, 16 and uh, 17. What's like the problem for 
Jalen Elliott and Nick Coleman in seven, six, uh, in 17 was like, they didn't have older players who they could watch and see like, Oh, this is how it's supposed to happen. Right. And so last yeah. year it was difficult because, you know, Bertrand and Leah foul were kind of scuffling a little bit. So when they're scuffling, it's like the younger guys, it's like, well, we don't really have someone to model off of. Yeah. Um, so that's a really good point you made there, Jamie. Um, all right, moving on to the next question. Fifth quarter Irish. If I told you that Riley Mills had a dominant season as three tech, Jalen Sneed played two thirds of defensive snaps and there were no major injuries on defense. Would you buy this could be a top 15 level defense? In other words, if everyone else did what you expect and this happened, uh, would that be enough to be at the, at that level? I would say yes. Top 10 offense with a top 15 defense equals a likely playoff burst statistically. What do you think, Jamie? I mean, I would buy that their top 15 level defense if that happens, because that means Mills had a kind of season that was like a Jerry Tillery 2018. I mean, yeah, dominant, season. dominant three tech. Dominant, like that kind of season. Yeah. Then I would say that really changes things up front. And then if Steen is playing two thirds, that means that he's really making an impact. You know, he's really making, yeah. it, it's essentially he's a starter, right? He's a starter. Yeah. Um, and so he's kind of taken that, you know, second year jump that not all those guys take. He, he, he skipped the, the part of becoming contributor to like being a dude. Right. And, um, and I think, I mean, that I think is probably a little bit more likely than Mills having a dominant season, but if, I mean, it could happen with Mills. I mean, it, and, it, and if it did, that wouldn't, I mean, think because I, I think even without just has as I kind of think of like where I would project things, I think Notre Dame is probably going to be a top twenty defense anyways. So that would definitely push them to the top fifteen for me. Um, and then if I mean a, a lot else depends on too. And like if you're like as expected, like I expect Patel to be very productive. Uh, I expect to get something uh, out of that that JJB kind of like Nana. Colbert or whatever combination. Um, so I think though, and then like I expect the secondary to be good, right? Like I expect the secondary mm -hmm. to be good and linebackers to be better. Um, I guess with, you know, the offense, I think a lot of people have high expectations of the offense because of Hartman, but it really all just depends on those receivers and kind of how all that plans out. Like if uh, Thomas and, and Merriweather really have that kind of jump and then you have that and you get some help from the young guys and, and whatnot and from there and everybody stays healthy there but um yeah i mean that could happen i think that's probably like best case scenario and then if that happens they're gonna probably win 11 maybe 12 games yeah i mean you think like sneed playing two-thirds of the snaps then that means that he's basically it's they're saying we would rather have sneed in there a lot of times rather than the nickel, which yeah. is, I mean, you have to be really good um, for that to happen. That means you have to be like JOK almost. Yeah. Cause if, cause if they didn't like him, cause let, let's, uh, he's saying no major injuries. So you're stipulating like, look, we have every, like Notre Dame is saying, we have everyone yeah. that we want. We are, we, we would, we are choosing to play him. And so therefore it's like, he's either beaten out Kaiser or he's just, in, in my opinion, it's more likely that, uh, he's just out in that rover spot and he's he's good enough to it's like we don't care who we're playing against he's like matchup proof and so that's that's a pretty big deal yeah. um so yeah i mean and plus like a dominant player inside because i just don't think like okay you look at howard cross right it's like he's going to give you good snaps and you have a dominant player next to him then that means who's ever next to that it's like now all of a sudden all of a sudden uh javante jean baptiste like he's not dealing with like they can't focus on him because you've got someone. Well, they got to double going. him, and all of a sudden, yeah. all their sliding protection, all the. And, the, and imagine uh, what what does that mean for the linebackers? Like, what does that mean for Bertrand? And what does that mean for Maris? Right, like it all just, just kind of thing. it it all shifts because when that kind of stuff happens, you get guys who are dominant. Then all of a sudden, you start getting like Botello rushing on uh, and blocked by a running back. Yeah. And he's going to win that like 90% of the time. Like, so all, all these kind of things happen. Um, and then also too, you have to, if he's having that dominant season, you, have, you don't have to blitz as much. 
Yeah. You do a lot more things in coverage. You can kind of mess with quarterback more. There's a lot of it. And plus yeah. just that pressure in the face. Um, and I think run defense is probably like, you know, one of the biggest things that I would probably worry about with the defense. So if he's having a dominant season as a three tech, I mean, I think the run defense can be pretty good. Yeah. All right. Uh, Exern ND uh, 1994. With all the June visits, how many commits do you think Notre Dame gets before the season starts? Uh, I mean, well, they're at 16 now. Yeah. Uh, I'd say they probably get five or six or something like that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it could be more than that or whatever. But most of the guys are going to, um, who are taking these officials right now, are making their decisions um, in the summer before yeah. the season. So, um, so I, yeah, I mean, I would say low 20s. They're probably going to end up with, uh, you know, that's you know, give or take or whatever, that will, that's probably where they're going to be at. Um, yeah. And then it's about kind of finishing off with some other guys. Yeah. I mean, I would say by the end of summer, their recruiting class will be pretty much formed, but for a handful of guys, you know, um, not say that those are like, they won't be important guys, but they'll, they'll be pretty much, we'll, we'll know what the recruiting class basically is coming out of the summer in the official visits, like Jamie said. So um, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot. You're going to want to, you're going to want to stay tuned into that. We're going to have a lot of, um, we're going to have a lot of recruiting shows talking about the, uh, the recruiting visits that are coming up post visit updates and all that stuff. So you're going to want to stay tuned in to irisportsdaily.com and the YouTube page, like, and subscribe, like, and subscribe, Jim, like, and subscribe Got to do it. Got to do it. All right. Funk Beavis says, you often mention a lot of the recruits don't have much pass blocking film because uh, programs are run heavy, but is the same true for other positions? For example, even before Canyon had to play quarterback, his team won a state title by running the ball. How do you assess guys like that? So essentially, how do you assess guys like um, like Isaiah Canyon, who who are in an offense that predominantly runs? Right. Or, um, he, you know, he's playing another position. Sullivan Absher is a good example where it's like he played and they were running like triple option and stuff. How do you how do you project him on film as far as like how is he going to be as a pass blocker and things like that? Well, I think with all these guys, you got to project. It's always got to be about traits. Right. Um, yeah. And you got to take the context into it if that's the case, like because some guys aren't going to put up the numbers. Um, so, yeah, like that's where you're going to see, you're going to see, you know, what can you get out of the other stuff? Is there other like camp stuff? Cause that's when other camp stuff becomes valuable. That's mm-hmm. when you can see like, if they have other video of working like workout, that's why getting guys in person and working them out and valuing in person, that's important too. Right. So that's a, a lot of it. And I think with offensive linemen specifically, it's like you're projecting like, look at this guy, the way he bends his knees, look at the way this guy gets to the second level, look at him move. Um, look at how like smooth his feet are and all that kind of stuff. And then you, you project that to you're going to, your coach, your offense, Michael's going to teach that guy, right. And, de- and develop them. So that's kind of what it's all about is just, it's, it's projecting. And it's like, do they have projectable traits? Um, and and kind of looking in it from uh, that perspective. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, it can, obviously it's difficult. Um, you know, and, and you're you're very you're much better than I am at uh, <laughs> at looking at the line, guys. I, I think for I, I think for the the wideouts, um, it's just like you know, like for Canyon, right? Like the burst that he has at his size. I yeah. mean, it's just a it's just apparent, you know. Um, and then and then you just have to look at like or like a Rezac kind of like he, he has the way that he moves, the way that he is kind of able to uh, get in out of breaks the way that he responds to certain actions in the run game. Like you can just see kind of like the instincts and the the mind for the game that he has. And then look, Notre Dame was able to verify his speed and that obviously makes a huge difference for his size. So, um, you know, it's, it's stuff like that. You got, you got to take everything into account. All right. Um, CHS FB 75. Are there any updates in the upcoming media deal for Notre Dame? I did not quite understand the article post on the board yesterday. Did you have something on this, Jamie? Um, well, I didn't see, I didn't see the thing that was posted on the board. So apologies yeah. for that. But um, 
I think, I mean, I think the main thing is that, you know, I think Notre Dame wants to stay with NBC. I think that's yes. what, what seems to be the case. They, they would like to stay with NBC. They're like happy to be kind of partners with them. They like the whole like infomercial kind of deal, like the, you know, fighting for whatever, like they love that kind of stuff, right? Like that stuff's important to them. I don't even know, honestly, if, does that actually matter? I don't know. I have no idea, but they think it does. So that's, it's important, important to them. them. Yeah. It's important to them. And they do get like, I mean, they do like these little, um, they do the halftime stuff on, on Notre Dame players and all that. And, you know, I, as even though people uh, rip on them for, you know, hiring Boston called guys to do the thing, uh, do play or uh, color commentating, or they get Pat Hayden for years or whatever. I mean, it's very, overall, it's, extremely favorable to Notre Dame. They want to keep that kind of thing. Right. So, um, and they like being on a broadcast network and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think it's just, they want the, the money. Right. But, it, yeah. and it's a super important thing because you can't stay independent if you don't get the money you want. You can't, you then, then that's when you have to say, geez, maybe we do got to join the big 10. Like I, I, the other thing is too, is I think the other thing with NBC is if you get a deal with NBC, then that can, because they're already a partner, now they're a partner with the Big Ten. And if you do kind of move that, that kind of makes sense in that way, rather than say like if Notre Dame did, uh, let's just say Apple, right? Apple did a, a deal with, with Notre Dame. Well, if, if you're going to make that move, then it's like, well, how does the TV deal work with Apple, the void, like, I mean, the Big Ten's not going to pay you out for whatever. Like, so how does that all work? So I think it it gives them flexibility uh, going further too, right? To if if it works out with uh, NBC, yeah. but hopefully we'll see where, where we're at. I mean, the thing that was the thing with the NBC deal this whole time has been it's special to Notre Dame, right? Just like just like the Under Armour thing, it's yeah. similar in that. It's special. And now it kind of isn't because now NBC has the Big Ten. And so now I think Notre Dame ought to look at NBC and be like, hey, like it's been pretty, it's been pretty like they've been kind of taking Notre Dame football for granted a little bit. Now it shifted when they brought in Mike Tirico. I mean, that's a big deal, right? When you have Mike Tirico calling your games, that's a big deal. Right. And I and I think that it just it it carries a different kind of cachet. When you have Jack Collinsworth yeah. and Jason Garrett calling your games, it's kind of like, hey is this like a serious thing for you guys? Or like, what's, what's the deal? You know, what, what's going on here? I, I just think the, the production value has been diminished over the years. And I think they need to say like, Hey, is, is, is this important to you? How important to you is having Notre Dame football? Right. And obviously the money is a big part of it. Like if, if, if NBC just comes forth with a, with a deal that Notre Dame likes and, and it hits their number, then they'll take it and they should, right? They, they absolutely should. But I, I think Notre Dame needs to challenge NBC a little bit because they've, they've been very like a good partner to NBC. I mean, they, they really supported them in the Peacock thing. Like they, they thought it was a really good thing. Um, they, they pushed that out, right? Notre Dame has been a good partner to NBC for, um, you know, a long time or on, on some things that Notre Dame fans are not happy with. So I think they need to push them a little bit. Um, but it's like, it's not a, perf- it, the thing is, it's different with the apparel because it's not a performance thing. It's not that wh- whoever is carrying the games has nothing to do with the product on the field. And so that's why I think this, this is a situation where they're more likely to just stay with the partner they've had this whole time. Right. It's, it's just easier. Spe- and honestly, probably, especially because they might be changing partners with the apparel. Cause like, you don't want complete change overhaul of yeah. the whole thing. Right. You just don't want to have to deal with that. I probably getting burned by Under Armour would probably, um, you know, burned by the deal. It's not like yeah. it's not like Under Armour treating a bad. I, I meant like in terms of like they thought it was going to be this like you're it's like you're taking a bet on Under Armour yeah. and that they lost the bet right. So yeah. um, and then it's like you really have to. Um, I, I think that is important to kind of look at. It's like, I mean, I don't know how like the MLS thing is going with Apple, 
and MLS is different, but it's like Notre Dame. MLS is just like they're going to take whatever because they're. I mean, I mean, they're at a point where they probably it's need diff- to take yeah, that on something. It's a yeah. totally different thing. Where, I mean, the brand is strong with Notre Dame, but uh, you know, shout out Deez and Romero, But like, you have to get. Um, you don't want the brand to be anyway diminished, so you have to be smart about it. Let's look at look at Nike. You know, yep. the, the brand is strong, but some other people came in, and so then they kept pushing. Right, that's what everything yep. has to do. That's what they always kind of catch up. My, Nike, even if sometimes people pass them, Nike always manages to catch up or, or you know get on top again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Iris Bonks asks, "Who do you think are the best realistic quarterback targets for 2025?" I mean, I think you got to ask again after the summer because it's too yeah. early to say there isn't, uh, you know, I, I don't even know, like, they, like, I'm sure they have a pecking order of guys, but it's like, um, they've offered a number of them. Which of these guys are going to get on campus? Which of these guys are going to throw? Who's coming to invasion? Who's coming to their quarterback camp? Um, that's what will ultimately decide it and where they kind of look at it. I mean, I, uh, I really like Deuce Knight. Um, I mean, he's pretty electric, uh, but, and he seems very interested in, in, in Notre Dame. Uh, but, you know, he, he, when he's back in the summer, where are they at then? Are they like in a really good spot then for him? And are they in good spot for other ones? Maybe he, some other guy comes to summer and just wows him. That happens, right? So yeah, we need to see how Hartman does. We need to see what they do uh, at the position as far as like going to the portal or what they're going to do. There's just kind of a lot going on um, with quarterback. So I think yeah, by you July said. you'll have a really good idea for 2025 quarterback. That's typically how that that happens, and. If they don't have an idea, then then it turns into okay. Well, then hopefully they have the big season, and then you kind of get momentum from there. And I, I mean, obviously, look at Dylan Rayola; he was early commit and then bounced out. And Notre Dame's had that same thing where they've had guys come in early and bounce out. So it's it's a long process. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So that's uh, the subscriber questions. Let's go to listener questions now. Uh, CFP Hertz asks. Do we still have the Audric Estime hot take? Why don't you just give it to us, Jamie? What's the Audric yeah, Estime I hot mean, take? I mean, I feel like this is just Stephen Gunn, like uh, Rob Wozniak right there. Hot take. He's awesome. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, my, my thing was he was going to rush for 1,300 yards, right, and, and, and during the season. I don't even know if that's that big of a hot take, really, because Diggs is gone. And I think, you know, there's questions about, like, who's going to be the kind of the number two back? Are they going to yeah. have a, a – a guy who's kind of splits there, or is he going to be, you know, true RB one getting 20 carries a, a game? Like could happen this year. And I, I think if that happens, lock it in, he's, he's going to rush for like probably 1400 uh, yards. Right. So um, yeah, I think he's going to like, so I think Josh Adams rushed for like 1300 something that year. Um, I think that is the kind of year that I think that, maybe not with all the 200 yard games, maybe it would be a little bit more like consistent stack throughout. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's the kind of season I think that a semi is going to have. Hot take. Jamie thinks Audrey Costeme is good. All right, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Next question from Michael Collins. Uh, thank you for putting this in. Uh, should Notre Dame put players name on jerseys for all games, road games only alternative unis, green and shamrock. If so, could the could the player get a percentage of jersey sales, or do they get a cut now? Thank you. Um, all right. So first question: Should Notre Dame put players' names, last name on jerseys? Um, so it should it be all games, just road, or just alternate unis? I vote all games. I vote all games too. I I, I guess only just because of tradition they don't. It, it, like, no tradition. No, they used to do it. Don't. People say tradition, but it's like what they when people now at this point when people say that. Exactly. But then what? Yeah, tradition, what is the reason why? What did Lou do? That's what tradition means. What did Lou? How did Lou do it? If Lou did it, that's tradition. If he didn't do it, then it's not tradition. Like 
Notre Dame's had jersey names on the back of jerseys before. It's not. And Lou changed a lot, just so changed all the time. Don't remember. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I would vote for all. Um, the players do get a percentage of their jersey sales if they opt into it. Yes. So they, they have, have to, to opt, opt in. into it. Yeah. Um, and some guys didn't last year. I don't. I don't know. The, I mean, everyone has their reasons, I'm sure. But like, I, I know, like Michael Mayer didn't last yeah. year for whatever. And I think um, Olivia Miles does not as well. It's a different sport, but yeah, but yeah, there's like because there's other you might be giving away stuff, and, and maybe they only get a percentage or whatever. Maybe they don't want to give that. They can sell different other merch or whatever. I, I don't know how it all works, but um, yeah, they would get if if they want it like already without the names. Like it's like because people know, right? It's like like I always thought it was just so stupid. Like the whole like. Manti Teo making his Heisman run, and then he had they had the the shirts with the lay on it. And yeah. it's like this dude's not getting any of this money. Like, yeah, retroactively, cut the check, ND. <laughs> give me give cut it back the check. Like, come on, cut yeah. the check. All right. Um, Joe Bro asks, uh, does Notre Dame have a pipeline? Is he he meant in another one a pipeline with the Catholic schools? Uh, uh, I mean, I it helps. So. I mean, it helps. I mean, they. Doesn't I mean, hurt. they definitely have. It, it's not a pipeline like there's because I mean, the, everybody always is like, Whoa, how come we can get this guy's public? It doesn't work like that anymore. It's not like air parts and the, you know, the sixties where it's like, you know, people are like funneling kids to Northern. That doesn't happen. I mean, certainly I would say Catholic schools. Um, first of all, a lot of them still play really good football. Uh, yeah. And second of all, they, you're definitely friendly towards Notre Dame and that help. It helps. It helps, but it's not a pipeline. Like it I just mean, lends itself because they operate in a similar way. It's okay. And it's like, um, and I can't remember what, um, I can't remember Hamilton school. Uh, what Kyle Hamilton, Marist? what his school. Yeah. Is it a, it's a Catholic school. I can't remember, but anyways, the private school, right? Yeah. It's a private school. And that was a thing where he was like, he liked how those similarities, yeah. right? And there's a lot of people who have that. And so some of these, a lot, or some, a fair amount of these Catholic high schools have the same kind of environment that Notre Dame has. And that helps, but it's not like a, I mean, if guys want to go to Alabama or whatever, they're just, it's, it's not like, man, it's Catholic. Because there's so many people that go to Catholic schools now that aren't Catholic. Yeah. Right, like it's not. Uh, uh, I mean, it happens at Notre Dame all the time, too, right? So, yeah. All right, uh, Matt McCarthy asks: With unlimited official visits, do you see Notre Dame changing their policy and having players committed elsewhere? Uh, Caleb Beasley, Peyton Woodyard, etc., come for official visits during the season? No, because I mean, they might. I don't. I don't. Well, specifically, I don't think that the unlimited official thing will make them change their policy. Right, because um, they don't want their players doing it. That's because the, they don't want their players doing it. Yeah, they don't want their players doing it. And that and that would a hundred percent. If they did that, that would. They're. I mean, why wouldn't you? Right. If you're going, like I already see. Like I saw, read something with like Isaiah Canyon. He's like, I'm still thinking about officials. And it's like, well, he's going to take his official in June, and they're going to say like, well, are you locked in or you're not? And that's what's going to happen. And that's just kind of how it happens, right? With like with those guys. Um, And I think also too, they don't want to have a situation. You're inviting more Peyton Bowen situations. And I know they weren't like official visits, but he wasn't paying for those visits. Like, so uh, I mean, yeah. So all that kind of stuff, they, they, why would you want that? Why would you ever invite more of that? Um, like you either just get rid of it and just accept like, okay, this is how we're going to do it. Or you just say, no, this is our one rule. And I don't think it's, I think, I think that's actually a pretty fair rule to be like, you know, you're committed. You can take another visit. Just don't make an official visit, whatever. Like, then it doesn't limit. You can say like some of these guys, whatever, but you definitely don't want to pay Bowen straight. But, but I think that's the other thing too, where you just say we're Notre Dame. I think now because of that Bowen situation, they're probably like, 
you're going to do that, I think we got to move on and we're going to offer some more guys here. Like, that's just kind of what, how they have to approach it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you mentioned him. My my ears are perked up on Isaiah Canyon. How about because he's like blowing up and stuff? Yeah. It, it's just, it, you know, when, when the recruitment is closed, it's closed. And when it's not, it's not, you know? No, I... Yeah, I, I, okay. I'm just I don't I don't know I don't know right I'm just saying like I am monitoring I am monitoring. Yeah, it's like a, you know um, like a week after it's like oh very blessed to have gotten very blessed to have been offered again and it's like okay that's fine like it, on itself it's nothing on its face it's nothing but then you give a, you then you give a an interview where you say uh, I might still I'm still thinking about taking visits and stuff okay like. Yeah. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's nothing, but things are starting to add up a little bit. I think it's always kind of 50 50 because you yeah. get some guys like that who are like Jaden Lamar, and he was a guy who kind of did that. And then they're like, yeah. oh, well, he is kind of this one. And then he took a bag, right? And then, yeah. um, uh, incredible that a guy like that could get in a bag, but, uh, <laughs> whatever. That's just how it is. Uh, but, um, yeah, like I, I think there's been plenty of guys too who have said, "Hey, I'm going to, like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm interested in this," and then, um, and then it just nothing comes of it because they're like, "Hey, you know, we're just letting you know, like, this is kind of where it is, right?" So yeah, that's I, like I think that's probably what will happen with him, and then, I mean, you find out pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, CFB hurts. I'm not even putting it up. Don't you even do it. Don't do it. Yeah. I am not saying I am concerned. I don't look, I am not on the reporting side. We are not on the reporting side. Okay. Leave that to Matt and Christian. I'm just saying that I'm monitoring. <laughs> when you I'm hear saying. that, whatever, it's definitely like <laughs> not what you want to, you don't want people. When people say that it's like, okay, like that, yeah. It's it's not ideal. Yeah, it's you don't you don't like it, but it, it also might be nothing. It literally could be nothing, right? Yeah, I don't know. And it's not. I'm not impugning. I'm just saying. I'm monitoring. That's all. Uh, Cameron Casey, eight one eight. Any concern that Justin Scott has set up a trip to Notre Dame in June when he is just a few hours away? Uh, we talked about this. Um, he needs to set up a visit. He needs to set up a visit. And uh, but you, you know, well, you know what? To, to feel about good setting about setting up a visit. He, he needs to come because yeah. he set up other visits and whatever. So I think with just all of recruiting right now, um, for the most part, people need to chill and just kind of let June happen. Yeah. And then kind of see how it goes. But if Justin Scott doesn't come to Notre Dame in June, doesn't, doesn't visit Notre Dame again in June, uh, I mean, I would say – Probably not gonna happen. Probably cross, probably cross them off the list. Yeah, probably not gonna happen. Yeah. Um, okay, that's where we're gonna leave it, Jamie. Nice mailbag show. Um, thank you everyone for tuning in. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday talking about uh something. We'll come up with something, Jamie. We always do. Yeah. Uh maybe recruiting based, maybe uh team based. We'll come up with some um uh, topic to discuss It'll always be a good time so thank you everyone for tuning in uh if this is your first time listening to the show hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell jamie hit the notification bell so you know when we're going live uh links to the podcast are in the description below uh thank you very much everyone have a good day and we will talk to you on thursday